We want to come close to Allah. We want to change our ways and habits. We want to listen to a lecture that will inshallah educate us. We want some knowledge. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, it is important for you to know that this effort you have made is considered by Allah. It is written down by the angels. They know and Allah knows. And Allah says, because of this effort, he makes your path to Jannah very easy. Now you might want to know how. Very simple. When you come, your heart is softened. You start asking Allah's forgiveness. You promise Allah to read Salah. You promise Allah to change your ways and your habits. As a result, your path to Jannah is made easy. This is why seek knowledge. Make an effort to go. Make an effort to attend. Attend the lectures and the lessons of the ulama. Make sure that you are there because I promise you the mercy of Allah descends upon a gathering such as this in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us favor upon favor. He wants to give us Jannah. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullukum tadkhuloon al jannata illa man aba. Qila wa man ya'ba ya Rasulallah qala man ata'ani. Every one of you will enter Jannah, the Prophet says, besides he who refuses to enter paradise. So the Sahaba said, who would refuse to enter paradise? So he said, whoever follows me will enter Jannah. Whoever does not follow me has refused. They have refused to enter Jannah al Firdaus. So this is something that is absolutely important. This is a way to enter Jannah al Firdaus by seeking knowledge another way of entering jannatul firdaus my brothers and sisters is hadith in sahih al-bukhari where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says man sallal bardain dakhal al-jannah what that means is whoever makes sure that they read salatul fajr and salatul asr they will enter jannah that does not mean there are two salahs for a muslim you know you cannot take the hadith and say right i heard the hadith tonight i'm going to read two salah out of five that means i will go to jannah no because those salah are quite difficult because people are sleeping early morning and you know how difficult it is to get up for salatul fajr go to the masjid the smallest crowd is for fajr salatul asr why in the afternoon people have a siesta people like to sleep People have a little bit of what is known as qaylula. They want to rest. They feel lazy to get up for Salatul Asr. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm not going to go. The hadith says, if you can forsake your bedding and get into the masjid or fulfill your salah, for you is Jannah. Man sallal bardain, dakhal al Jannah. Look at how simple the hadith words it. Whoever makes sure they read these two, that when they are most difficult, it means the other three will be easier for them. If you do that, which is very hard, you know, when you have a mathematics examination, and you answer the very difficult questions. For you, one plus one is nothing. They don't even need to ask you, subhanallah, because you have answered extremely difficult questions. The same would apply if you are doing that which is hard for you to do that which is simple and easy is actually a given. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Similarly, another very important uh, quality, a person who fulfills Hajj, when it is compulsory upon him or her to fulfill Hajj. Obviously, we need to follow the rules and the laws. You know, you don't just break the rules and laws and fulfill the Hajj against the rules, but you fulfill the rules, regulations, and you have made sure that you did your Hajj. You need to know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again in a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he says, Al Umratu ila al Umrati kafaratu lima baynahuma, wal Hajjul mabrur, laysa lahu jazaun illa al Jannah. One Umrah between it and the next Umrah that you make will expiate the sins between the two Umrahs. You will achieve forgiveness. So make Umrah in abundance if you can, because you will achieve forgiveness of the sins between the two. But when you fulfill your Hajj, the reward of an accepted Hajj is only Jannah. It is nothing besides Jannah al Firdaus. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Raja'a. A person comes back from Hajj similar to the day or as clean as the day that his mother gave birth to him. May Allah make it easy for us to go for Hajj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to thank him. I mean, brothers and sisters, another special way of entering Jannatul Firdaus is to fast often for the sake of Allah. 
Fasting is not only in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, it is compulsory. Whoever witnesses the month of Ramadan should fast. That's the instruction of Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah. But we need to know something. There are voluntary fasts. Just like Salah, there is Farad, there is Sunnah, there is Nafil. The same applies to Zakah. There is that which is Farad, compulsory, and that which is Nafila. You can give Sadaqat. You can do good deeds for the sake of Allah. The same applies when it comes to the issue of fasting. You fast during the month of Ramadan. The hadith says, Man saama Ramadan thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal kana kasiyam al-dahr. And you know that is because لِأَنَّ الْحَسَنَةَ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا Whoever fasts Ramadan and follows it through with fasting six days of the next month, which is known as Shawwal, they do not have to be consecutive. They can be separated, no problem. Allah says you will have the reward of having fasted the entire year because your good deed is multiplied by 10. One month of Ramadan multiplied by 10, you got 10 months. The six days multiplied by 10, you got 60 days. 60 days is two months. 10 months plus two months is one whole year. You have the reward of the whole year. But there is another sunnah fast three days every lunar month. 13th, 14th and 15th. They are known as ayyamul bid. You fast those three days, you have the reward of having fasted the entire month because three by 10 is 30. Then two days a week, Monday and Thursday, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I promise you, my brothers and sisters, if you try to achieve this, you will earn Jannah, not any ordinary Jannah, through a special door known as Ar-Rayyan. Yuqalu lahu Ar-Rayyan. It is a door known as Ar-Rayyan only for those who are fasting for the sake of Allah. And this fasting is done because it disciplines you. When you are fasting, what immorality are you going to do? What sins are you going to do? What salah are you going to miss? You have so much spare time. Lunch time, you don't need to worry about your salah. There is no lunch for you. You go for salah, subhanallah. It increases your closeness to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will enter Jannah from a special door. Brothers and sisters, today, to lose weight, we are ready to fast. Unfortunately, some people gain weight in the month of Ramadan. You know that? Because what happens is when they get to iftar, they think they are doing qada for what they have missed. And they eat and eat and they eat after taraweeh and they eat again and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize that Ramadan, yes, it is a month of goodness and happiness, but it is a month of discipline. We need to discipline ourselves. So if you can discipline yourself in Ramadan, inshallah, outside the month of Ramadan, you will achieve lots of goodness and the doors of Jannah will be opened wide. On the last day of Ramadan, it is known as Laylatul Ja'izah. Once the moon is sighted, the prize giving comes out. And the hadith says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he boasts to the angels about us, that do you know what is the reward of my worshiper who stayed away from his food and his drink and his desires only for me? Subhanallah. So the angels, obviously, they are waiting for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And he says, I make you, O oh angels, bear witness that I have forgiven them. Subhanallah. That is the eve of Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us deserving of Eid. If you have fasted and if you have stood in taraweeh, you deserve a day of happiness. That day of happiness is to earn the pleasure of Allah. It is not a day of sin. Some people, the alcohol comes out on the day of Eid. The haram comes out on the day of Eid. The clothing, everything that they were wearing correctly, it all goes back into the cupboard and all the nakedness comes out on the day of Eid. That's not what Eid is all about. Eid is a day of happiness to make Allah happy, not to make shaitan happy. Allah gave you the whole month of goodness. Now I want you to promise yourself and to promise Allah. This Eid, we will not do anything to displease Allah. We will only do that to please Allah. Get up in the morning and you obey Allah. Read some nafila, read some Quran. MashaAllah, this is the month of the Quran. It does not mean, MashaAllah, was the moon sighted? Yes, it was. Okay, close the Quran. That's not what Eid is. If the moon was sighted, we need to read more of the Quran. Because now Allah has given us the gift. <laughs> Amazing. So my beloved brothers and sisters, that is one of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding Siyam. 
Another very important hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the hadith of Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu anhu. He says, once I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a bit of water for his wudu. And with that water, he, he told me, sell, which means ask, ask what you want. Subhanallah. Imagine Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, ask, what do you want? What would you say? You know what he says? As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. He says, I ask you for your companionship in Jannah. Wow, wow, Allahu Akbar. Look at how beautiful. I think our children would ask for an iPhone. They would ask for something else. They might ask for a Lamborghini. You know, what do you ask? Subhanallah. But he says, As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. I ask you your companionship in Jannatul Firdaus. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, help yourself to achieve that by kathratul sujood by prostrating a lot help yourself you can get it any one of us can get murafaqatun nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are not sahaba we are not companions in the dunya but that does not negate the fact that we can be companions in the hereafter don't you know that how by following his sunnah following his path and by ensuring that we fulfill our salah now, if the Prophet sallallahu says, you help yourself to achieve this by engaging in prostration a lot, it means your salah is in order. But over and above that, make sure that you find yourself in prostration. My brothers, my sisters, when we fulfill our five daily salah, I request you to think about the time that you spend in the most powerful position you can ever be in. And that is sujood. The closest that a slave can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the condition of sajda. I want you to ask yourself, what is your relationship with sajda? Ask yourself, how long do you take in the most powerful position? And improve it, please. Improve it for the sake of Allah. There is no better place that you could actually put your head on than the ground for Allah. It is the closest you can get to Allah. Please take your time. Think about it from today. The lesson is for me, inshallah, an encouragement for myself and for every one of you to say, please take more time in sujood because you don't know when next you will be able to prostrate for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh